Finding Nemo is one of Pixar's magnum opus. Sometimes I feel it gets forgotten when we think of Pixar as a whole, but man, this film is just immaculate. Every scene of this movie I just absolutely love. The jellyfish scene, the tank clogging scene, the seagulls, the turtles. This movie is just a masterclass of filmmaking and it's almost a challenge to decide just which is a highlight. The scene that really changed Finding Nemo from a great movie to a bloody fantastic one. Honestly, I could probably come back to this movie multiple times for this series, but the best scene that we're talking about today is the moment they actually, finally, uh, find Nemo. The point the whole movie's been building up to, but transpires not as you'd expect. Also today we're supporting Mr. Beast's Team C's campaign, so stick around to see how you can help. For free. So starting off, I'll give you some context, though really, I'll be surprised if you haven't seen this film. Nemo went missing. He was kidnapped by some fishermen and ended up in a dentist tank. Over time, he's made friends, impressed the crew, and has been prepping with them to escape. But... The dentist's unhinged niece Dala has made her appearance now, and Nemo is to be the chosen present for her. That's bad news considering what happened to the last guy. As for Marlon the dad, he's been traveling across half the ocean to find his son, following one clue to reach all the way to Sydney, and has word of mouth covering the rest, quite literally. They've seen all sorts of sea creatures, narrowly dodged some seagulls, and now this pelican can take Marlon straight to Nemo, since they know each other. It's Dala time. Uncomfortably close, uncomfortably bassy, and apparently oblivious too. One change of perspective is all you need to teach kids everywhere how terrifying poking the glass is to fish despite it not seeming so bad to us. And hey, here's something pretty creative. Take the innocent smile of an overenthusiastic kid with dental issues and you can turn it into a real horror parody. <laughs> I think everyone gets the vibe there, even without seeing the original. And so, Dala sits in the dentist's chair. I'm a piranha, then the Amazon. Keeping up the scary kid notion, apparently, she bites. Rambling some facts that went over my head as a kid. But talking about fish gives us a nice segue to... And a piranha's a fish. Just like your present. <laughs> Ugh, it's so freaky how quickly innocence can become creepy given the right context. I don't want to see anybody shuffling around the way Dala's does, especially if a fragile fish is meant to be held by it. Oh no. <laughs> Poor little guy. And for the first time in this scene, the soundtrack kicks in. Up to this point, we've been hearing diegetic radio sounds in the background, something nice and slice of lifey. But now, brass. Nemo's dead. Uh, must have left a present on the car, sweetie. <laughs> I'll go and get it. <gasps> He's still alive! By the way, I never knew because I was obviously like eight at the time, but Gil here is voiced by Willem Dafoe. I love this man. It's also only when pausing all the time that I can really appreciate some of the composition these films do. It's one of those things that always goes over my head when watching in real time, but this shot has like technically five layers to it. Dala, Dentist, Nemo, Faces and Fish. Fantastic! But yes, this is all a ploy for from Nemo, coming up with it on the spot after recognizing the task failed successfully with the last guy. She wouldn't stop shaking the bag. Hitched a ride on the Porcelain Express. Fake your death and you'll be sent down the toilet. He's gonna get flushed. What a smart little guy! <sighs> oh no, not the trash can! And that's a neat shot. They could have shown this twist in a myriad of ways, but essentially first person is perfect and with narration to highlight it too. All the while, Nemo just bobs helplessly on the side. And then... Help! Help! I found his dad! Where's Nemo? Where is he? Dentist! Dentist! He's over there! What's a dentist? What is that? It's the moment we've been waiting for, with the context we weren't really hoping for. Also, isn't it strange to hear the style of quips in a non-modern movie? I can't imagine how the scripts would be these days. I guess more like Finding Dory, but the jokes here are like, what's a dentist? Or dentistry terminology. Hope he doesn't get surplus zero at the secondary portal terminus. Or it'll be a subtle phrase like the porcelain express. Or the background identity of who the patient is. <laughs> what the? Ah! Well, good thing I pulled the right one. Hey, Prime Minister. That's great, but also much more subtle. It went over my head as a kid. That's the theme in this film. And speaking of themes, want to support Team C's in a really easy way? Well, I've been waiting for an excuse to do so. With this clearly C-themed video, for every sub we gain, I'll be donating one pound to the cause. It's all about taking junk out of the ocean one piece at a time. 
I'm sure you've heard of it by now. I'll be keeping count right until the end of the campaign, and judging from our previous videos, that could be anywhere between £300 and £1,800. It's all down to you. So donate some of my money for free this year with barely any effort required. And I'll post out the results on the last day of the year. And while you're here, come see our stats, check my other links, and join us on Twitch as we stream every day of January, because there's no YouTube videos in Jan. Thank you for your time, and let's help the real Nemos of the world. Don't be a Dala. Anyway, back to Marlon, he's come all this way, outgrown the fears he had from the start, and he's not about to stop now. Nigel, get in there! I can't go in there! Oh yes you can! You know, technically, we never heard Nigel tell Marlon his name, but sure sure. Kick up the drama of the scene with a good old tongue yank. This child has no idea what awaits her. She even scowls at first. And you've heard of kettles screeching for anger or fear? Ever seen a dentist tool used like this? Sounds like an extra scream. That's the mark of a good director right there. And with so many elements of chaos coming together, we get the perfect juxtaposition. Cutting back to the diegetic sound that is the calm dentist radio again. The events of the room now muffled away as we see this poor boy's perspective on it. Reading a reference to The Incredibles and understandably getting a lot more nervous witnessing the scene without the context. This kind of joke I think still fits perfectly fine in modern screenplays. It's great. Really breaks up the tension for some good comedy. Hey, that's almost a stroke of luck. Gil was injured by landing on dentistry tools in the past. At least here, Nemo's protected with the bag in a sense. But now, the action has come to a halt. Nemo successfully avoided the trash can, but... It's the worst case scenario from Marlin's perspective. In a stroke of poor luck and miscommunication, he comes to the conclusion that he's traveled across the entire ocean, living the dreams of his son's explorative imagination, seeing turtles that are 150 years old, only to catch his son's lifeless corpse at the end. At this moment, a father has lost his son, and nothing else in the universe matters in this moment. There's a heartbeat playing here, the guttural physiological reaction of someone in shock. The music no longer blasting, but a single sad horn exhaling. And all focus pushes onto the one thing in the room that's not chaotically swinging about. In fact, look at how we come out of this beat. <gasps> Time has literally grinded to a halt at this realization, surely reflecting Marlin's brain right now. So in shock that reality still needs to catch up. Dala on the side you can see is swaying more gently than we've ever seen, and Dory's addition is almost entirely disregarded. And pulling out of this moment is a literal warply sound effect. And back to reality, water's got no gravity, <clears throat> everything's back from before. The music is back, as is Dala's eloquent background foley, and the bird is shooed away. The perfect miscommunication is complete, understandably overlapping and just quick enough to seem like a plausible mistake. But the scene's not over just yet. Daddy? <gasps> PC? PC? Marlin might have been a distraction, but Dala is still an issue. One problem's solution is the other's catalyst. And that's a horrifying imagery, shaken to death like that. Darla's doofy face overwhelmingly taking up frame space, whilst Nemo can barely get a frame where he's not a blurry mess. Kid's almost indistinguishable in the bag. And the sound of the sloshing water in the bag really sells it. So in retaliation, the others help the only way they can. Bloat inflates as we've seen, Peach screams from their perch, the others rotate the mountain to aim, Jacques spins the dial for the... Ring of Fire! And Gil shoots on sight. A truly heroic move for a fish, considering the real sacrifice it brings. Gil, as the one who feels most responsible for Nemo and the one with the least to lose, will put himself in harm's way to avoid the same mistakes of the past. And Nemo is saved from one hazard to another. No equipment worries, but now the water is gone. The classic fish conundrum, brought up in quite a creative way. A burst water bag. Crikey! All the animals are gone mad! 
and chuck on in a little more chaos as well, why don't you? Fish are flying, niece is screaming, bags are bursting, seagulls are shooed, and the dentist has donked himself in the forehead. Just chuck in some slapstick knockouts on the side. It's fun amidst everything else, and makes for a great callback. This isn't just stunning to one anymore, everyone's involved. And I think we all enjoy a good jaw-dropping gag. Back her in the head! Go, girl, go! And I love that the fish are just egging them on with their commentary. You rarely see the toys attacking humans, so it's nice to see the fish actually taking down the big guys. Plus, who knew Gil could move like that? But boy, at this rate, I feel like Dala's extremities are about to hit Mark speed or something. But now it finally all comes down. Gil. Checkmate. Tell your dad. I said hi. I think actually this is usually a really cool dynamic for a good emotive conversation. You know. Fish reverse drowning, talking with their literal last words. I liked it in the Spongebob movie and would have been happy to see it more. But in this context, I guess Gil's already used up all of his breaths playing Bounty Castle, so it doesn't last nearly long at all. The dentist's dish, an element that we've been reminded of multiple times through this movie, usually with just some shot of a gross human spit going down there, but it's been there. And it's a logical deduction after the info we've been told so far, a secret extra option to escape only the keenest of audience members may have predicted beforehand, and a satisfying surprise ending for the circumstances. <gasps> And even Gil gets a happy ending after all of that. It may have seemed like uncertainty with Nemo's reaction, but it's certainly one of the best outcomes after Gil's reassurance that... All drains lead to the ocean. Busy! Yeah, screw you, kid. How dare you share four out of five of your letters with mine, slightly rearranged. But it's the perfect happy ending for the scene. The villain loses, our Nemo escapes, and we can optimistically hope he goes in the right direction. With a clear goal set in place, Find your father and turn this sadness into joy. Honestly, I would want to talk about so many more scenes in this movie. Pretty much everything is a masterpiece, but this is the scene we've been waiting for since the start of the movie. This is the definitive scene of finding Nemo. So to see how it's played out by the biggest pros in the industry is mesmerizing to see. As per usual with the format of most films, this is the scene that shows that the characters don't want what they think they've wanted since the beginning. Okay, yes, it's still what they wanted, but their discovery comes with more issues to solve first. Nemo along the way has built confidence and will later be directing a school of fish to save their lives, whilst Marlin, similarly pushing through his internal and external boundaries, also gains the wisdom to not leash his son so closely and let him grow as a person. Uh, fish. Despite his disadvantages. Building a bond of trust despite the miles and miles of distance between the two. And of course, all upheld with some fantastic action, great theming, and great emotive voice work. Just a shame that Ellen DeGeneres was Dory the entire time. But hey, if Marlon can ignore her, then so can we. But this was one of Finding Nemo's most memorable scenes, or at least a turning point, and another showcase of changing up what to expect considering this is meant to be, on the surface, a kind of scene suggesting the end of the journey, when really there's a little bit more to go. It's just really cool to see Pixar in their prime. But that's enough gushing from me. My name's been Daz, you didn't really care, suggest some other scenes we should cover in 2022, watch us on Twitch through January while we're on a YouTube hiatus, and I'll see you in a bit.